Yeah, and so at this time, when there are growing calls in the U.S. to escalate the proxy war in Ukraine to give Ukraine F-16s and attack them and whatever else they, they're asking for, uh, and at a time when U.S. officials are increasingly ramping up conflict with China, it would be wonderful if our elected progressives could be a voice of sanity and a voice uh, calling for diplomacy. But let's look at what Bernie Sanders just did. He was on the BBC uh, promoting his new book, and he was asked about Ukraine. And he basically said he's fully in lockstep with Joe Biden. I'm glad you found this video because I heard some talk about it on Twitter and I wanted to see it for myself. So should it is. America send F-16s? It's not an issue that I've been heavily involved in, but I, I support what the president is doing. I think what Putin did was outrageous, not only for the people of the Ukraine and all the destruction, not only for the thousands and tens of thousands of Russian soldiers who have been dying, we need a world now if we're going to come back climate change, if we're going to come back future pandemics, we need a world to come together. And Putin has radically disrupted that. And that is a real tragedy. What? But I think at the end of the day, the United States, NATO cannot sit back and allow Putinist aggression to go uh, un unresponded to. Putinist aggression. Well, he, he so. We need What's a world. We need a world to come together to combat climate change. But first, before we do that, we need the world to risk <laughs> nuclear war so that we can uh, prevent uh, ethnic Russians inside Ukraine from having their cultural rights respected uh, and having their whims respected in Crimea, where most of them want to be a part of Russia, not, not Ukraine. Before we uh, co cooperate on climate change, we need to risk nuclear war over who, who gets to rule Crimea and eastern parts of Ukraine and also ensure that we have a proxy on Russia's border, even though every single rational top U.S. diplomat in recent memory has warned against how reckless that is. It's like Bernie Sanders has forgotten everything he used to say. He used to talk at least about NATO expansion, how that was provocative towards Russia. He wrote an op-ed, or at least he signed his name to an op-ed shortly before, or maybe early on in Russia's invasion, around that time, about how NATO expansion to Russia's borders was provocative. He's forgotten all that now. Now it's just, uh, I, I don't, I'm not really following it. I, I'm, I'm not really involved in it, but I support what Biden's doing and NATO and Russia need to stand up to uh, and, and NATO and U.S. Need, need to stand up to Russia. And again, does he even know, like, like, does he even know, for example, that Russia put out diplomatic proposals before the invasion, like December 2021, these extensive draft treaties, very detailed, uh, supporting many proposals that Bernie Sanders claims to support, such as arms control and rolling back NATO expansion. Does Bernie Sanders even, is he even aware of that? He says right there, I'm not very involved with this. So I'm not even sure if he knows that. Does he even know like what the Minsk Accords is? And how that was reached in 2015 and the Ukrainian government, under the influence of powerful fascists, refused to implement it. And every time Poroshenko or Zelensky tried to do something towards implementing Minsk, there were far right Nazis vowing to kill them and, and demonstrating and, whole, and, and actually attacking police. Does he even know any of this? Because that's who he's in ideological lockstep with, are the far right <laughs> Uh, forces inside Ukraine who have sabotaged peace at every single turn and every opportunity to prevent this war. Well, you, yeah, he answered the question. He said, I'm not following this very closely. <laughs> this really important. He's, he, he's, he's very concerned with the, 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 the preoccupations of the kind of millennial NGO oriented left that follow that, that, spewed out of his 2020 campaign. He said, you know, Putin is really making it harder for us to deal with climate change and uh, the pandemic get to get like a global consensus on the pandemic. But so basically what, did, what is he saying? Putin by invading Ukraine is making it harder for the world health organization. Whose third largest funder is Bill and Melinda Gates to dictate to other countries what they should do in the event of a pandemic, which was disastrous. I mean, this is what, he's up to. And no, I didn't find that image of uh, Bernie Sanders at the inauguration of Biden, where he's wearing his mittens and sitting there kind of uh, impassively and not really showing interest or excitement as if that's the big retort to agreeing to loot the big rebuke to Biden after you just rolled over and agreed to lose and killed the hope of all of your followers. And also, what are you doing wearing a mask outdoors? It was just weird. Um, uh, he, um, so talking about, you know, Putin's making it hard to deal with climate change, did blowing up a gas pipeline 
and releasing a large amount of methane into the atmosphere, did that maybe make it difficult to deal with climate change? Because that's one of the worst environmental disasters I can think of in recent memory. Largest release of methane into the atmosphere in history. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, so this is Bernie, uh, Bernie, who on the debate stage with Hillary Clinton could not challenge her on what I think would have been the most discrediting issue for her, especially from a foreign policy point of view, is Libya, because he supported it. Hmm. He supports every R2P humanitarian intervention. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. here's Bernie was actually friendly with the great Michael Parenti, the father of our friends, Christian and Marcy Smith Parenti, who contribute to the gray zone. Great piece well, by Christian. He's not, he's not Marcy's father, obviously. No, the father-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> They're not related. They're not brother and sister. Um, yeah. Sorry, it's been a long day for me already. But uh, here's Michael Parenti on Bernie Sanders and Yugoslavia. But then came the Yugoslav war and Bernie sided with President William Clinton. And, and, and supported the bombing of Yugoslavia, 78 days and nights, depleted uranium, which has left Serbia today with the highest cancer rate in all of Europe. Uh, I vigorously opposed that war and wrote a book about it called To Kill a Nation, the attack on Yugoslavia. Great book. Yeah. I, 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 said, I said he's standing shoulder to shoulder with NATO and the CIA and the White House and, and, and Bill Clinton and these, these creepos. Uh, for a war against against these people like this, I said I, I and that's when I broke with him. I just I don't I stopped sending contributions. I stopped. Furthermore, his salary was way bigger than what I was making. <laughs> but then so I think that says it all. And you know, since we're talking about someone who led the left grassroots in the U.S. into two presidential campaigns, one in 2020 that I think was just filled with follies. I've come around to Michael Tracy's analysis of that, but 2016, there were some genuine, genuinely inspiring moments. And, you know, it's nice to see someone hit back against the corporate democratic establishment, but that's all gone. Where will everyone go from here? Um, I have some thoughts on that, but Aaron, wh what do you think? Where will, where will those forces go? Those grassroots forces in 2024? I don't see anywhere for them to go right now. Um, so something needs to be organized very quickly <laughs> to uh, give them a place to go because where, where, like, where can they go? Uh, the only possible ch vector for anti-war sentiment would be, I hate to say this right now, it would, would be Donald Trump because Trump just released a video in which now once again he's claiming to t want to take on the neocons. Forgetting, of course, that he appointed a cabinet of neocons and over, oversaw neocon policies. But if Trump is at least articulating an anti-neocon point of view, as he just really forcefully did in that video, where, you know, for all the voters out there who feel tired of these proxy wars, um, where else are they going to go? But to Trump, once again, if he makes it into the, into the race, certainly he'll make it into the Republican primary. Well, Trump, Trump's message, his rant, his nine minute rant against the Ukraine proxy war is his message going into the campaign. He understands where America Amer and Americans are on this war. 